What did the Lord Jesus say? Watch. Will he find us watching? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Turn to song number 70 with me, if you would. Seven zero. And let's stand together as we sing 70, number seven zero. Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night. Faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all turned and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, shall come if at the dawn of the early morning he shall call us one by one when to the Lord we restore our talents will he answer thee well done oh can we say we are ready brother ready for the soul's bright home say shall come if we've been true to the trust he left us to seek to do our best if we obey all the lord commands us we shall then be truly blessed oh can we say we are ready brother ready for the soul's bright home Waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come. Blessed are those who the Lord finds watching. In his glory they shall share. If he shall come at the dawn or midnight, will he find us watching there? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother? Excellent singing. Brother Moa, amen. Good morning. It's good to see you here this morning. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. amen. Are you awake this morning? Yeah. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Praise God. Yes, Are you happy to be saved today? Yes. Amen. I am. Praise God. It beats my old life, that's for sure. Praise God. It's good to see you here today. Let's pray and we will continue on. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time you've given us this morning to come into your house. Thank you, Lord, for this building. Lord, thank you for your people. I pray that you would bless us with your presence. Lord, I pray you would work greatly in our hearts. I pray that you renew our mind, our spirit today. Lord, give us the joy of our salvation. Lord, create, Lord, a clean heart in us, we pray. And I ask that you be glorified. Lord, if there's anyone in this building that does not know where they're going to spend eternity, Lord, they've never been saved. I pray that they would come to Christ before it's eternally too late. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, your love. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Take a few moments. Take a few minutes. Shake a few hands. Amen.
Thank you, Mrs. Michael, for the beautiful music. 252, we'll be singing 252 if you make your way back to your seat. 252, we can remain seated for this one. 252. Well, if you need a, a bottle of water, you're hot, you need a bottle of water, just raise your hand. Our ushers can get you one. Just put it up. If you're an adult, you need one, kids, you're about to go downstairs in the air conditioning. But if you're an adult, if you need a bottle of water, just raise your hand. Um, they'll get one to you. Amen. Oh, shoot, was that easy for salvation, right? If you want to get saved, just raise your hand. You know? Sometimes we just get so prideful we don't want to. Amen. That's a sermon of its own. But I would encourage you, if you have not received a bulletin, we can get one in your hands as well. You're going to need this. Make sure you take this home with you because it's valuable information that's helpful. Um, number one, if you know anyone interested um, in NECA, our Christian Academy, I, um, we are now officially um, enrolling. And so I encourage you to direct them our way. That would be a blessing this coming Monday night. We're going to be having another men's work party. Um, there's a lot of things we need to get done. Um, you'll see at the bottom of your bullets in here, um, please pay attention to what I'm about to say. It's very important. Starting July 22nd, the front entrance of the church is off limits Monday through Friday. That means if you want to get into this building Monday through Friday, you will have to go through the back door or the side door starting July 22nd. It might be earlier. If they can come, they can start working on the first floor foyer, fixing it underneath. And so the construction crews are coming in. There's a lot of things they have to do. And for our safety, um, just stay out. They, they will be locked besides them coming in and out themselves. Um, but those doors will be locked any other time. And so come through the side door, come through the back door if you need to get into the building. That would be helpful. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but... Um, it just has to happen. It has to be on. There's going to be plastic up. There's going to probably be a ton of dust. And so just keep all that in prayer as they come in. And men, if you're interested in helping, come out. You, number one, you get a free meal. Amen. Amen. And number two, you can help on this church. Amen. I appreciate everyone that came out last Monday. It was a blessing. We got some work done. Um, we have to tear the front carpet out. 
um, of the downstairs foyer this week, and we're going to continue sanding, hopefully go up the other side of the steps. And so just keep all that in prayer if you would. Um, and pray for our Good News Clubs. Um, coming up, we have three locations we're going to be going into, so I pray if you're interested, please see me. We can plug you in. Um, whether it's just taking attendance, whatever it may be, there's many things you can do sitting with kids, trying to keep them quiet. There's many things you can do. And also, if you would, keep in mind that there's a ladies' prayer meeting at the end of the month on July 29th, and also a men's prayer meeting August 3rd, if you would. And as the ushers come forward for the offering, um, just um, keep in prayer, Brother Mo Anderson, that he gets enough strength so he can be here in God's house. And so he's going through dialysis and all those things. He wants to be here, but just keep him in prayer. It's good to have Belushi here. Praise the Lord. He's one of our newest members. If you have not met him, I encourage you to see him at the service. He's sitting next to Josh. And so praise the Lord for him. Other than that, that's all I have for announcements. This, I'll have uh, Brother Theron Stout, if you would, pray for the offering. Let's now turn to 419 in the songbook, song number 419, the sound of the battle cry, 419, let's stand together as we sing 419. Home. 
Well, who's happy they're not in hell, amen? Because it's a lot hotter there than what it is right now. I'm, I'm thrilled that I have a home in heaven, amen? That's what it's about. I don't know if there's air conditioning up in heaven, but I'm sure it's not going to matter. But it matters in hell. It really does. It's not my message this morning, but it does matter. That, that man, that rich man, is still asking for a drop of water. And so, praise God, we have something to be thankful for. If you would, open up your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter number 20. 2 Chronicles chapter number 20. Hopefully this is a help to each and every one of you this morning. I read this earlier in my devotions this week, and I wrote in my little calendar in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, if you're not sure where that's at, it's in the Old Testament, not 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles, and you'll find it, 2 Chronicles 20. And I put in my calendar, go back and think upon this text, and so I did and so this is what I got. And hopefully this is a help to each and every one of you this morning. The path to victory. The path to victory. Each and every one of us this morning, you're struggling with something in your life. You're dealing with something. Maybe it's a personal issue. Maybe it's a family issue. Maybe it's a, obviously a sin issue. I don't know what issue it may be, but you have an issue and you need victory. Maybe you've gone through your whole entire life. You've struggled with a besetting sin that... We're going to hear tonight, Paul, Paul Aiden is going to preach tonight, so I encourage you to be back tonight. So I don't even know where he's at. He must be down in junior church. But, but come back tonight. He's going to need your exhortation. Amen. You're going to need to exhort him. Lord, help him. And so I'm excited to see what he has to say tonight. But we all struggle with something. If you're sitting here this morning and you say, no, I'm fine, I don't struggle with anyone, anything, anyone, you're a liar. You are. I'm just going to say, say it how it is. Each and every one of you struggle with something. And how many times have you gone in your life and you tried to get over something, you made a decision, you might have come up to this altar and you might have said, Lord, this is the last time I'm coming, this is it, I'm on, my, I'm on the road to success I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fall anymore. I'm gonna stay true to you, and that might be you. But the week later, you came back and said the same exact same thing. Why? Because you need victory. That's why. This morning, out of this text, a man by the name of Jehoshaphat. He's a king. He shows us many things in this text, an example to follow, and I hope this is a help to you. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude. I encourage you to mark that in your Bible. A great multitude 
against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamor, which is in Engadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that you've given us this morning to open up the bread of life. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us now, Lord, with your mighty presence. I pray that, Lord, Satan has no right here. He has no place here. This is your house. Lord, this is your building. You are to be glorified. Lord, you are the king. You're the high potentate. Lord, you're in control. This is who you are. And so we just come to you, God, with full assurance and a great expectation, knowing that you can, Lord, work in our hearts and our lives, bring us to a place where, where, where we can get on the path of victory, God, and, Lord, see success in our life. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to make the wise decisions. Lord, help us to get past our pride. Help us to get past the things, Lord, that cause us not to approach you, that you may be glorified today. And we'll thank you so much for it. We ask in your heavenly name, Jesus. Amen. We're going to look at almost all this passage of Scripture. By this, read the first four verses. The path to victory. In April 1988, the evening news reported on a photographer who was a skydiver. This is an interesting story. He had jumped from a plane along with numerous other skydivers and filmed the group as they fell and opened their parachutes. On the film shown on the telecast, as the final skydiver opened his chute, the picture went berserk. The announcer reported that the cameraman had fallen to his death, having jumped out of the plane without his parachute. It wasn't until he reached for the absent ripcord that he realized he was free-falling without a parachute. Until that point, the jump probably seemed exciting and fun, but tragically he had acted with thoughtless haste and deadly foolishness. Nothing could save him, for his faith was in a parachute, never buckled on. Many of us in our life are just like this man. We jump out, we're having fun, we're doing what we want to do, and when it comes down to where we have to pull for help, it's not there. Here we see a prime example to follow in King Jehoshaphat, the path to victory. And may I say this morning, I don't care where you're at in your life, I don't care what you're dealing with, follow this, and this will be the most beneficial help that you'll ever have in your life. Number one, seek the Lord. It's very evident. It says it in verse number three. And Jehoshaphat feared set, and set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. I can only imagine what Jehoshaphat was thinking right now. He didn't get with his friends. He didn't get with the elders. He didn't get with his buddies. No, he got alone. He set himself. He made a priority to seek God on the matter. It was a personal decision he made. And may I say this morning, whatever you're dealing with in your life, whatever you're going through, you're going to have to make a personal decision. It doesn't depend on what your neighbor thinks. It doesn't matter what mommy and daddy thinks. No, it matters what God thinks. And Lord, help us to make just a practical decision. I'm going to set myself to seek God. And may I remind you, he was a king. Many other kings, if you've been reading through your Old Testament, oh, they just hired out their help. Well, I'll go get the Assyrians, and I'll hire them. I'll go get Egypt and hire them to bring me up some chariots. No, he did the right thing. He made the right move. And when the hardest time in your life comes, and may I say, there's a great multitude. I hope you underline that passage, that phrase, the great multitude. There's a great multitude against you. You just don't see them. You know this warfare that we're in? It's a spiritual warfare. It's not carnal. It's not. But can I tell you, it's mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. It's a spiritual battle. How do you deal with the things that come your way each and every week? You deal with something every week. It could be your spouse. It could be your kids. 
could be your job. I don't know what it may be. It could be this, this satanic oppression outside these doors. And let me tell you why you should come to God's house. Because this is a safe house. This is a place where you get encouraged. This is a place where when you walk out the door, you should say, praise God, I'm serving the king of kings. That's what this house is about. And this is why we have church. So we can go outside these doors, be encouraged, get right, be like David in Psalm 51. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me so I can go out and serve you and praise you and give all glory to you outside these doors. But you have to make it a personal decision. You have to set yourself to seek God. And may I also say, David says in Psalm 77 too, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. Too many times we get on Instagram, too many times we get on Facebook, too many times we get on Twitter, whatever else you get on, and we just say, well, I'm having this problem. You all have any help for me? You all have an opinion, something to give me to help me through this? Now, we might not necessarily say that, but what we're saying on there, that's really what we're saying. And we want pity, we want sympathy from all these people out here, instead of just going to the Lord. How often have you gone to God this week? How often have you prayed this week? Stephen Lee taught on prayer this morning. How often have you prayed? Lord, help us to seek God, to seek him personally in our own way. It's a personal decision, but it's also a personal desire. Jehoshaphat's desire is here, I'm in trouble I need some help. And there's only one person that can help me. I'm going to unfold it here in a moment. But Psalm 119, verse 10 says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. What a, what a desire that statement is. With my whole heart. It wasn't my half heart. It's not a quarter of my heart. It's my whole heart. And may I say, some of you in this room right now, your life is about to slip off in eternity and you're going to enter into hell without having the... The blood of Christ applied to your life. You're in great danger. And you need to wake up, get rid of the tradition of man, get rid of all the different things that you're holding on to, grasping on to, instead of just letting go and coming to Jesus Christ. You need to get saved. You can't, you can't pretend. There's no pretending with God. He sees the heart. This is who he is. He sees the heart. He knows what's going through your mind in your heart right now. He knows the excuses you're bringing up. He knows everything about it. Well, what would my family think if I got saved? What would this church think if I came forward and I got saved at the altar? What would people think? Well, I'm going to tell you, everyone in this house would rejoice. You better believe that. I had the privilege yesterday of leading someone to Christ, a 14-year-old boy. And Stephen Lee tells me, that supposedly, that Brother Banda and, Al and Stephen were, have been trying to get a hold of that guy, right? Is that right? So praise God, he got saved. That's what it's about. It's good to see Catherine here today. We knocked on her door. Praise God for you. But my point is, we have to seek God in his face because he's the only one that can help us against the great multitude outside these doors. And if you haven't noticed, during Pride Month, oh, it's a great multitude that wants to raise their little flag and say, I'm standing with them instead of I'm standing with Jesus. I'm standing for the right. We're, we just got done singing, raise the banner high. Amen? Are you raising the banner of Christ high? I am a Christian. I'm living for Jesus, and I'm going to seek him because this battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. And we're going to get to it here in a moment. But you need to seek the Lord. Number two, though, write this down. Look at verse three and four. You need to set the line. You need to set the line. In your midst of seeking the Lord, you need to set the line. And let me explain it to you. And look what it says in the end of verse 3. He personally set himself to seek the Lord, but he declared a fast throughout all Judah. Can I tell you, I think one of the worst things a church can do is just for someone to have a prayer request and not tell their brethren. I think it's the worst thing you can do. If we're so serious about the problems we have in our life, 
That person sitting next to you, hey, brother, hey, sister, can you pray for me? Can you fast with me maybe a day or two? It's not going to kill us to fast unless you have some medical issue. I think most of us don't have a medical issue. So it's not going to kill us to fast. But we need to set the line. Look what it says in verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help. Underline that phrase, to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Set the line. Number one, ask. You have to ask. You have to get God's people together and start praying and seeking God and asking God to intervene on your issue. Yeah, you struggle with things in your life. Get with something and say, brother, and let me tell you, if you're someone in here, if someone tells you an issue that they're dealing with and all you're going to do is just browbeat and talk about them, just shut your mouth because you're not a Christian, okay? You're not helping bearing people's burdens. That's not you. So if you just want to chatter, run your mouth, talk, talk about people behind their backs, instead of just praying with them and saying, hey, brother, let's get alone this week. Let's meet up for coffee. Let's come to the church and have a prayer meeting. I'll let you in. Come up the backside of the steps if they're working on it. You can meet right here. You can pray down in the air conditioning room. No one's here all week except myself. Well, how about you come in for a fall-in prayer meeting? They used to have them back in the day. Fall in prayer meeting. I think Almo's, we're seeing a revival in Medford because Almo is closed on Sunday. That's amazing. But my point is, are you asking? The Lord said in Matthew 7, 7, ask, and it shall be given you. Nothing shall be given you unless you ask. And may I say, you have to ask specifically. Turn to John 14 with me. Our Lord, before he ascended, he went to Calvary and was crucified. This is what he said to his disciples in John 14. In verse 13 it says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. There, it's specific. It's not a general term. It's not, oh, be with this person. Oh, be with that person. Oh, be with this. this. No, that's not what it is. Lord, oh, this person is struggling with alcohol. Help them to get over the addiction of alcohol. And help me maybe to be an accountability partner to them. Right? Help them to get in their Bible to have a thirst for you instead of having a thirst for that wicked alcohol. See what happens. God, God doesn't want general. He wants specific needs. Now, I'm going to tell you, Jehoshaphat and, the, and Judah, they're being very specific with, that, with God. They're asking. Lord, there's a great multitude outside of our doors who are approaching our city. You know who they are. He brings them up here shortly. I'm going to get to it. But they asked. We have to to ask. We have to humble ourselves enough and get past our, our own selves, our own wicked flesh and humble ourselves and be in the position to say, Lord, I'm humble. I'm asking you to help me in the situation I'm in because without you I cannot do anything. I can't do nothing. The Bible says. Lord, help us to ask, but also look at our text. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. What are you trying to find? I was thinking about preaching the pearl, the pearl of great price this morning. I read that this, this week. It might come next week, I don't know. But have you sold all for the pearl of great price? It speaks about the pearl of great, great price when he found it. Have you found the most precious thing on this earth? That's, the, that's Jesus. Jesus is the pearl of great price, if you did not know. He is the pearl of great price. Have you sold all and just bought the farm? Because that's what the guy did. He buried it, and then he, bought, he sold everything he had and bought the field. Have you found the pearl of great price? Are you ready to give up all for Jesus? Seek and ye shall find. Lord, help us to seek him and who he is. 
Here is a promise annex. Our labor and prayer, if indeed we do labor in it, shall not be in vain. Where God finds a praying heart, he will be found a praying and hearing God. He shall give thee an answer of peace. Thy precept is threefold. Ask, seek, knock. There is a precept upon precept, but the promise is sixfold. Lot upon line for our encouragement because a firm belief of promise will make us cheerful and constant in our obedience. Seek God. But may I also say this, especially in our church, in Baptist churches, Lord help us to fast. Verse number three. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Does this sound familiar? Esther did the exact same thing. In almost the exact same situation. Here, it's just Ammon and Moab coming up against them to try to kill them. God help us to fast over the issues of life. You need victory? Spend some time fasting. Spend some time just getting alone with God instead of taking a vacation from God. Amen? I don't mind vacations. But don't take a vacation from God. It's the last thing you want to do. Spend some time with God. Fast. Say, I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God's face. Because I want an answer. And I'm not going to let you go, Lord, until you bless me. Fast. We have to fast. Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 17, verse 21, How be it, this kind goeth out, not, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. We're going to have to do it. It should be a practice of the Christian. Jesus did it, and he was God. Did he have to do it? No, he didn't have to do it. He's God in the flesh. What makes us think he had to do it? It's an example he left for us. Lord, help us to fast. Not worried about the next, the next meal we're going to eat, next place we're going to go. Or I'm going to five guys, Pastor Joe, after the service. I can't, I can't fast today. I can't give up my Chipotle. I can't give up my Dunkin' Donuts. Know what I'm saying, Sandra? You can't give up this, that, and the other. It's a joke that Sandra and I have, Sandy and I have. If you want to know it, I'll tell you at the service, or she'll tell you. But you have to set the line. That's the line. Ask, seek, fast. And everyone has to be on board. Let me just put it to you this way. If Ryan Cody came up to us and said he has stage four cancer, would you fast? Well, you don't need to say yes or no. Let's turn the shoe. What if you had stage four cancer? Would you want me to fast? You better believe you would. Lord, help us. When we know our brethren and sisters are having issues and a great multitudes against them, and it could be your family, it could be your friends, this bowery in you trying to get you to stay in your sin, whatever it may be, Lord, help us as brethren to say, you know what? We're putting the anchor down. The the wonderful thing about our Lord is, and evangelist Dwight Smith preached on this and was very good in Matthew chapter number 16. Turn there with me, please. This is a a valuable lesson. And if he ever comes back to New England area, I'm going to have him up to preach it because it was really good. Matthew chapter number 16. It says in verse 18, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I don't have time to get into it all. You have the authority. The keys are a picture of the authority. And just write this down, please. Take the keys and hit your knees. Take the keys 
and hit your knees. You have the authority, hit your knees, and start seeking God on it. Study the book of Matthew. It's very interesting about binding and loosing. It's talking about, it's talking about prayer. It's interesting. Take the keys, hit your knees. Set the line. There has to be a line set. And when there is a wayward brother that's gone away, how about you just hit your knees? How about, how about you just get past your, your, your comments that you make and say, well, there they go again. No, hit your knees. How about you reach out to them and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Can I do anything to help you? I'm praying for you. How about that? How about we try that? You would want someone to do it to you. You really would. A weak brother, as Paul says in Galatians, why don't you come by him, lift him up, help him. Yeah, brother, I've been there. Let me show you the good and right way. Get on the right path. Amen? Amen. Number three. Look at verse five. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over the kingdom of the kingdoms of the heathen? And in and in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to stand with, to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? Number three, sound the lamentation. Someone that is lamenting is because they're under great oppression. Here, Jehoshaphat is lamenting over the Lord. If you read the book of Psalms, you'll see David do this. And, some, and I've kind of changed my prayer life a little bit. Because David was a man after God's own heart. But it's an interesting thing about David is, and some of us local preachers, we've been talking about this, we meet on Fridays, and this is, this is one thing David says, oh Lord, cut them off. And I've changed my prayer life a little bit. Lord, if they're not going to get saved, if they're not going to come to you, you know all things, cut them off. Get them out of the way. How many times have David said that? Read the book of Psalms. You'll see it a lot. You will. Lord, if that Christian's not going to get right, and then there are going to be a bad testimony against you, cut them off. The Lord knows all things. But thy will be done, Lord. I'm just saying, something to think about. And may I say, he was speaking against Saul, God's anointed. He was. So keep, think about this. Sound the lamentation. Number one, you need to recognize as you're praying to the Lord, you're crying unto your God, that who has the authority? Verse 5 and 6 declares this. Are not thou God in heaven? Is he? And rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might? so that none is able to withstand thee? You are God of heaven. What makes me think my situation you cannot move in? No, he is the God in heaven. No man's able to withstand him, and he can move in. You have to recognize who has an authority. It's not you, it's God. And praise God, we can come to him and pray to him the way we should. He has the power. And verse number 7, Are not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave us it to thy seed of, of Abraham, thy friend forever? He has the power. Stop trying to do it in your own power. Not by might, not by, by strength, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Lord, help us. In Zechariah chapter number 4, to get rid of that mountain in our life. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shall be nothing. Get rid of the mountain because God has the power to do it for you. But also look at verse number 8. And they dwelt therein 
and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's saying. This is a wonderful text in verse number 8, and it has a dual meaning. And you'll understand about the Lord's place. I want you to think about something here this morning. Jerusalem is God's place where he abode. When they built that temple, that was his place where his name is. The physical place. Now we're going to talk about the spiritual place. Because this is where it applies to us. You're his temple. And all of what's going on around you each and every week outside these doors, they're attacking God's temple. They're not attacking you. They're attacking God's temple. Do you understand that? You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's not about you. It's about God in you. You are his temple. And you, What makes us think that God is not going to defend his temple? What makes us think that God is not going to defend the place where he abides? I want you to think about that. So when you're dealing with things in your life, remember, your God's child. You belong to him. You are not of your own. You are bought with a price. That being said, sound the lamentation. God, you're the God of heaven. You dwell in me. Nothing's hard with you. No one can withstand you. It's all about you. You have all the power. You live in me, and this is the promise. Don't miss it. In verse 9. If we, when evil cometh upon us, as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. Sometimes we don't cry because we don't really see our affliction. We don't see the end of the road. Maybe we just need to stop in our life and see the end of the road of the things that are going on around us so we can actually realize that we are in affliction. Because that's really what it is. And look at what it says the rest of this verse. Then thou will hear and help. Verse 10, And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab. He points them out by name. And, and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of that thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? See the, see the words he's using? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. And that's the place you need to be in. That's the promise. When you set your sights on God, and at the end of the... On, at, at the end of this verse, but our eyes are upon thee. When you're in your darkest hour of all, turn to God and start crying. Start crying. The promise is that he's going to come. That's the promise. Then thou will hear and help. Have you sound the lamentation this week? I'm not done yet, don't worry. You thought I was done, I'm not done. Verse number 12, but our eyes are upon thee. This is our biggest mistake. And I want you to listen closely. We'll come to God. We'll seek God. We'll cry unto him. We'll fast. We'll pray. But there's no answer yet. And our biggest mistake is not following the end of verse 12, but our eyes are upon thee. So many times in our life when we do God's work His way, and we don't get the answer right away, we go on without Him. And we try to do it on our own. Can I just say it to you this morning? Stay put until you get an answer. Don't do anything else until He answers you, because you will mess up. I'm going to show you how you're going to mess up. Stay put. Isaiah 50, verse 10 says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of His servant? that walketh in darkness and hath no light, 
Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Stay upon God. Don't move. Don't move. Because this is what happens when you go ahead. Don't go ahead. But turn to Joshua 7. One of, one of the mistakes Joshua made after conquering Jericho. If you read about conquering Jericho, Jericho he had specific instruction on how to conquer them. Joshua 7, in verse 1, But the children of Israel committed a trespass and the accursed thing, for Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men, obviously he didn't know, from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, say, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And then he returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. This is the biggest mistake he made. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor, to labor thither, for they are but few. Your biggest mistake is not consulting God on it. And the men of Ai smote them, about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the, in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord unto the eventide. Your biggest mistake is going ahead of God and not waiting for him and his instruction. That's your biggest mistake. Don't get ahead of God on it. Don't go ahead of God on it. Yeah, you have issues. You need a place to go. You need a place to stay. You need a new job, whatever it may be. I don't know what the case is. But don't go ahead of God on it. Lord, help us to be sensitive enough to know when we get in our flesh and get prideful to say, Lord, forgive me and get back into the saddle and just wait on God. We have to wait because if we don't, that's what's going to happen. The men of Israel here, verse 13, And Judah stood before the Lord. They were not going to move until God gave an answer. With their little ones, with their wives, and their children. And it wasn't just the men. It was every single person involved. We're not moving. And you just need to stand still for the Lord and wait for God to reply. But well, this is a great thing. As you do this, look at verse 14 and 15. Then upon Jehazeliel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, that's a tongue twister, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. God shows up. That's what happens. God shows up. And he said on... And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And if you just wait, if you just hold out, if you just stand and stand still, whatever you're going to do, and say, Lord, I'm not moving until you Direct me. Remember, the psalmist says over and over again, teach me thy ways, O Lord. Direct my paths. And we just need to stand still sometimes until he directs our path. And what he's going to say is, the battle's not yours, it's God's. God's going to do the work. Verse 16, tomorrow, go, down, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall not need to fight. This is an interesting thing. When God moves in, you don't even have to do anything. You have no need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. When you go ahead of him, the Lord is not with you. 
It's very vital that we pay attention of just waiting on God. And when we wait on God and he gives the instructions, we see the landslide. But may I say this? You have to believe the Lord's word. Here in our text, it says the battle is not yours, but God's. Don't be afraid, nor dismayed. The battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down. Some of us, as we face our own situations, we might have to approach someone, we might have to get right with someone, whatever it may be. I don't know. But a lot of times, we want to bring our own ammo with us. Just in case God's not going to do what he said he's going to do. But we don't have the faith just to believe him at his word. Remind you, they're going into a great multitude. And their expectation is they're not going to fight. That's great faith. To go down unto them by faith. And the question is, are you going to believe God's word on it? Are you going to believe him? Here in our text, thank God, Jehoshaphat and the people believed him. But as you believe God's word, the interesting thing about faith is you have to act upon God's word. You have to go forward by faith. You have to go forward by faith. Verse 22, it says, And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, and to praise the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. They're destroying themselves. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. You have to go forward by faith because if you do not go forward by faith, you will never see the miracle. Not once, will you? You have to take God at his word and go forward by faith. You might be here this, this morning. You're scared to death to make the decision you know you need to make. You're scared to death to even go out soul winning. Take the step. Oh, you're scared to death to get plugged in here in this church. Take the step. Don't be afraid. Oh, you're just afraid to take the step to live for Jesus and how every, everyone might just mock you and ridicule you and browbeat you. Take the step. It's worth it. Oh, it's a pearl of great price. There's no value on it. Take the step and see what God does. The Bible recognizes no faith that does not lead to obedience nor does it recognize any obedience that does not spring from faith. The two are opposite sides of the same coin. You have to step, step out by faith. Interesting, interesting story. There was a tightrope tight walker who did incredible aerial feats. All over Paris, he would do tightrope tight acts at tremendously scary heights. Then he, had, then he had succeeding acts. He would do it blindfolded. Then he would go across a tightrope blindfolded and pushing a wheelbarrow. An American promoter read about this in the papers and wrote a letter to the tightrope walker saying, Tightrope, I don't believe you can do it, but I'm willing to make you an offer for a very substantial sum of money besides all your transportation fees. I would like to challenge you to your act over at Niagara Falls. Now Tightrope wrote back, Sir, although I've never been to America and seen the falls, I'd love to come. Well, after a lot of promotion and setting up the whole thing, many people came out to see this event. Tightrope was to start on the Canadian side and come to the American side. Drums roll, and he, and he comes across the rope, which is suspended over the treacherous part of the falls, blindfolded. And he makes it across, across easily. 
The crowds go wild. And he becomes, and he comes to the promoter and says, Well, Mr. Promoter, now do you believe I can do it? Well, of course I do. I mean, I just saw you do it. No, said the tightrope. Type do you really believe I can do it? Well, of course I do. You just did it. No, 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 said the tightrope walker. Do you believe I can do it? Yes, said the promoter. I believe you can do it. Good. Get in the wheelbarrow. How about you get in the wheelbarrow? What's stopping you? You believe the Lord? You believe he's the resurrection and the life? Jesus said to Martha, believest thou this? Get in the wheelbarrow. What are you waiting for? There's nothing to wait. You think God won't meet your need if you make the decision? No, he will. Get in the wheelbarrow. Let's pray. Stand to your feet with head and bowed, eyes closed. It's the path of victory. You want victory? It's laid before you. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to look at your word. Lord, I know each and every person in this room is dealing with something. Lord, things that I know, things that I don't know. But I know you know all of it. And I'm just asking, Lord, that the people in this room would be sensitive enough to respond to you, God. Lord, it's not responding to me, it's your word. God, I pray that you'd help them to respond the way they should. They all have things in their life, but help them to make the decision to get on the path, to maybe bunk up with someone, Lord. Help me to be accountable. Pray with me about this. Fast with me about this. And as we do so, God, show us thy glory. Maybe there's someone in here today that does not know where they're going to spend eternity. They've never been saved. You've never been born again. You know you're going to hell. God doesn't want you to go there. But today, will this be the day where you actually jump in the barrel yourself and say, I'm going to trust Jesus? Maybe that's you. I'll meet you right up here in this front, and I'll show you how you can get saved, and your life will be drastically changed. Someone will meet you up here. I'll even come to you. But don't leave this place without getting saved. Is there anyone here? No one's looking around. Is there anyone here that says, Preacher, I'm not saved and I would like to know. With a raised hand, I'm going to lift my hand up. I would like to know how to be saved. Anyone here like that? Anyone here like that? Maybe you're here this morning. And most of you, if you're Christian here, you're saved, born again. You're a believer. I'm not going to even ask you to raise your hand. Can I just encourage you, to, as the piano starts to play, would you come? No need to wait. No need to linger. You need victory. Would you come and ask God to help you, to enable you, to strengthen you? Maybe you're here, you want to become a church member. Why don't you see myself, my wife? We'll tell you how. Maybe you need baptized. I don't know. There's many different situations for many people. But would you come? If God is dealing with your heart, give your life to him. You'll never regret it. Give your all to him. As Christians pray, I'd encourage you to come.
Amen. It's good to have you out here today. The Lord bless you. I encourage you to come back tonight to hear Paul Aiden. He's going to be bringing the message. And so I'm excited to see what God's doing in their life. Last Sunday night, Stephen Lee preached. And so I encourage you to come out and hear these young men. Amen. They're a blessing. They really are. They're a great blessing. And so hope you're back tonight. Six o'clock, Tuesday, Soul Winning. Amen. Hope you can come out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time you've given us. Thank you for your love and goodness. I pray that you just, as we're dismissed, the Lord, from this place, never from your presence. Lord, go before us. Set us divine appointments in our life, Lord, where we can, Lord, direct people to Christ. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God and salvation. And, Lord, I pray that you do our, help us to do our very best to walk in victory, God, because this battle is yours, not ours. Lord, help us to walk in victory. Help us to take your word by faith. And we'll thank you for it. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. You are all dismissed. Lord bless each and every one of you.